Hey everybody, I'm Tristan Beck, and these are my 10 essentials. Cap and a few of the other guys went out to one of the postseason games down at Levi and uh, were on the sidelines, and it looks like they hooked him up with a bunch of different footballs for us to bring back. So I've seen, uh, there's probably at least four or five floating around. They were at spring training. All that and all of them with the uh, Niners logo on them. Yeah, that's a good way to just kind of like loosen the arm up more low key before you start getting into like, you know, your full catch play and ramping it up a little bit. But Ryan Walker is one of the guys we play catch with it almost every day. Tyler Rogers, those are really good football too. Scotty Alexander, those are probably the, the other two guys who I really got to watch out for. I take it very seriously out there. I'm trying to make a run at best, best football thrower on the team. You know, obviously every day, my 10 minutes of practice, I'm uh, giving it my all. It's the bullpen bag, so it's got some little goodies inside, all that. Uh, but, you know, as a rookie, somebody on the team, you know, it's my responsibility to make sure it gets to and from the bullpen every day. Me and Chewy is usually escorting me across the field when I'm walking out to the bullpen. It was Sean Jelly, who could not get the bag out of his hand fast enough to give it to me. He, uh, I think he was the most excited for me to come up and debut with the team because it meant he didn't have to carry it around anymore. At least two or three times a game, I'll have people yelling at me in the bullpen, like, hold up the backpack, like, we want to take a picture with it, like, put it on, like, can we put it on? And, you know, I might entertain it if it's before or after the game, but, like, during the game, it, you know, you can't always pull that off. So this is a Mark Pro. It's a stem machine. A lot of guys use it for recovery. I use it almost every day. You can... Uh, Use it to warm up, use it a little bit as a recovery module, but uh, basically what you do is you uh, strap these little stickers on you right here, and you just place them kind of anywhere on your arm. You know, there are different ways to put them on to, you know, hit different muscle groups. And then you hook them up to the machine here, and you turn it on, and it basically just sends a current through your arm, and it kind of, it's where you see people twitching a little bit, so it just gets the muscles firing. It uh, promotes blood flow to the area. There's a million different ways to do it, to hit whatever muscle groups you want. Guys use them on their legs, their hips, everywhere. I actually started using it for the first time when I was at Stanford, and you know they had the training room stocked with them, all the kind of same equipment that we have up here. Absolutely essential. Use it every day. Just try to get the arm feeling good over a really long season. So this is a lacrosse ball, definitely one of the most important. You know, you use it for kind of soft tissue work, you know, so just getting warmed up at the beginning of the day. You know, I'll usually get it on my hips, I'll roll my the arches of my feet on it, and uh, usually lay down and throw it kind of in the back of my shoulder. So it's not always the easiest to get all the like really small muscle groups with uh, like a foam roller or something else, and you don't always want to go to the trainers, you know, to have them just get you right. So. Uh, yeah, the lacrosse ball, it's just every day, you know, I'll roll out kind of the big muscle groups, then I'll spend about 10 minutes on this guy and be ready to go play the game. They're just the perfect snack. I mean, as somebody who's always kind of trying to gain a little bit more weight, be a little bit heavier than I currently am, I probably have between five and eight, five and nine a day. Look at that, 300 calories a pop. You can take them down in three bites and you can just move on with your day. So they're, I mean, absolutely essential. I take some home with me every night so I can have a little bedtime snack. You know, I got both flavors in here. You gotta mix it up. When you're, when you're putting them down at that volume, you know you need to kind of mix it up a little bit. You don't want to wear out one flavor. I love them. You know, I've actually never been that picky about gloves, surprisingly. Uh, you know, obviously being a pitcher, we have pretty limited access to like essential equipment. So a lot of guys take huge amounts of pride in like having a cool glove or, you know, they have certain gloves that they just have to use. They'll use them their whole career. But uh, I've just never really been like that. I mean, honestly, the thing that drew me to this was just the, I like the color scheme. It's, it's really comfortable. It, uh, it's been really durable, which is nice. It's a Nakona. Her name is Cookie, named after the like Keebler elf cookies. Are you familiar with those? And I think like, that's what the color scheme reminds me of. She's been with me, found on this last year, and obviously now through my, my first little stint up here in the big leagues. We're bonded for life. So this is a foam roller. The thing that's a little interesting about this one actually is that it vibrates. So if you turn it on, you got the side over here. You can see they got three different modes on it. Yeah, a lot of guys use it just as a bit of a warm up uh, modality, you know, getting a little soft tissue. I use like the, the hamstrings, the legs. I crack my back on it every day. I actually travel with this. Like having it in the hotel is, is just great because you know you come off the flight and you're, you're really stiff, you're locked up and you know you go straight to bed and you wake up not feeling great. I usually spend about 20 minutes on this before bed the night we get into a new town and go to bed feeling great. 
I'm a big coffee person. I drink way too much coffee throughout the day. That's pretty much the first thing I do whenever I get to the field is I'll walk in, put my backpack down, I don't even change. I walk straight into the kitchen and I grab just a little cold brew right here, pour it up over some ice, and that's how I kind of check in, start my day. I, I probably have like seven, eight cups of coffee a day, maybe nine, 10. I'm not partial hot or cold coffee, but whatever I'm drinking, I'm drinking black coffee. If it's nitro cold brew, if it's an Americano, if it's just a stock drip coffee, I zero cream, zero sugar, just jet fuel. For one, I just really like the shoe. I mean, obviously the Air Jordan 1 is classic. Personally, I kind of going back to the glove thing, I'm really not that picky on my cleats. And the, the reason I got these originally was because being black and white, they match almost any team and any uniform you have. So, you know, you're wearing your gray road jerseys, throw on some black cleats. You're wearing creams at home, you know, obviously black matches the belt. Like the road grays, the orange, they're pretty much anything. Any affiliate I go to in the minor leagues, I can just keep these guys with me and, you know, go play. Beginning of every year, I order three pairs. And then obviously they kind of break down throughout the year a little bit. We got the, uh, See if you got the pitcher's toe right here, which helps preserve them just a shade. I kind of notoriously always get hit with comebackers. This spring training, I was actually making a, an appearance against Oakland out at Scottsdale Stadium, and a guy drilled me with a comebacker, and it hit me right in the ankle. And it was right on the bone, and it should have been super painful. It definitely would have knocked me out of the game. It, you know, I mean, the guy, I think it was 112 miles an hour. Luckily, it actually got the cushion right here on the inside of my foot, and so I, I didn't even feel a thing. And anyways, I joked that from now on, I'll always wear high tops just because at the rate I get hit, I need all the extra coverage I can get. I'm not gonna say I'm like this enormous avid reader, but uh, you know, given all the downtime, especially being a pitcher, the travel, I always have a book on me. And you know, it kind of ebbs and flows with how, how quickly I get through them. But uh, right now, as you saw, it's the, uh, the consolation of philosophy. I'm really loving it, you know? I, I kind of mix it up sometimes. I'll go like books about sports. I'll go, uh, you know, not self-help books, but things like Atomic Habits or yeah, obviously different kind of stuff. I'm not really into fiction. Not much of a fiction reader, but uh, I guess this being the exception is a little, it's a classic ancient Roman text. So anyways, I'm liking it. I kind of try to mix it up, keep myself on my toes. I usually get some pages turned out on the flights. Uh, in the minor leagues, that was a big one because even down there you deal with layovers, you know? And so there's a lot more downtime on the road. Most mornings I try to get out and I usually will go out, get some breakfast, grab a cup of coffee and uh, just find a decent place to sit and uh, get some pages knocked out. The best book I read this year, Relentless by Tim Grover, former coach, trainer of Michael Jordan's and famously worked with a lot of really high level NBA players, uh, Dwayne Wade, Kobe's mentioned a few times in the book and it's pretty much just his observations from a career of working with you know elite Hall of Fame level NBA players and kind of what he thinks it takes and things that he preaches about what it takes to you know turn in a career like that. These have been my 10 essentials. Thanks for watching.